assume that the individual pursuing his or her own best interest will result in the maximum benefit for society as a whole. Right. And that certainly has right. to be questioned now. Um, leadership has always been very important to me, and so definitely compassionate leadership is more important than regular leadership. It reaches more people. It works better, I think. To the casual observer, the world today is in conflict in the extreme. Cultural, religious, ethnic, class, economic disputes are pervasive. What commentary can you provide? Are we really sticking to the questions? Well, well the first one. <laughs> we'll see what At least the first one. <laughs> and the first one is, what do we think of leadership? What is leadership? Even that the world can you is offer a, a definition or perspective on leadership when the world is falling apart? I think it's basically... Oh, the leadership that is needed when the world is falling apart. Isn't that what you mean? Right. Yeah. Any way you want. That's the point. But that's I think that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's a kind well, of leadership. The more open ended the, the better. To be honest, this is an all star lineup. I uh, mean, uh, we're gonna be at, we're gonna get to see here. Uh, Queen York is gonna be here. It's gonna be. Um, it's not something you're gonna see every day. Um, and. Uh, I'm not completely sure about exactly what the lecture's on, but I think that whenever you have these, this many people who uh, really have gone through these many experiences, who have held these kind of positions in the world, that you know whatever they're going to be talking about is going to be insightful and you're going to learn something. The people who you despise most are as committed to justice as you are. It just turns out that their understanding of justice is radically different than yours. And the people who are, are committed to fairness, they're, they're just as committed to fairness as, as, as you are, except it turns out that when you don't like the content of their fairness, you say they're unfair. The really interesting thing is to be able to, is be able to fashion the kind of vision that incorporates the partial truth of the sides that you most deeply disagree with. Because otherwise, it's not a vision, or I would say otherwise, it's a very limited vision. But what we're really saying is that there's nobody who's so stupid that they're 100% wrong. And what that means is that, that you have to listen very carefully for the partial truth, and especially the partial truth in the voices of the people with whom you mis most deeply disagree. However you polarize it, it turns out there's some partial truth on the other side that's the truth you need to learn most. I'd love for everybody in the next week Learn some partial truth of someone who you despise, a view you despise, you know? Rallying the base is the easiest thing to do. That's the easy, that's not leadership. What the media, what, what um, the political process has done, what so many um, interminable conflicts seem to have done um, between various cultures is create a sense of the other not being the other person in the car, but the other being a demonic, different, subhuman character. And that certainly is a problem of, mm. of, of system. So you end up with a lack of compassion mm. and human uh, interest in the human stories and caught up instead in political processes that are devoid of a real understanding of what consequences may, will, will be on the ground, what the impact will be on people, mm. what actually your chance of success will be in, in, in the future. Because if you do not take people into account in mm. your policy making at any level. You know, the notion of leadership and compassion here is that a lot of times when I've talked about this issue, people say, oh, that's kind of new agey, and that sounds nice, but it doesn't work. And um, you know, it's, it's seen as sort of simplistic or, or superficial or trite and so forth. But I said, you know, in my culture, it may be new age in America, you know, but it's not in Tibet, by the way. <laughs> and uh, it's mainstream. <laughs> so I'm normal there. And uh, I mean, Tibet itself, I, you know, I've been there several times. I was born in India. I went back. And to go there and to see just the stark reality, there's not much to eat. It's a very simple. Um, I like to um, 
say that uh, Tibetan food is sort of the Scottish food of Asia. You know, there's, 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 there's not much going on. And they, I remember one time seeing a Scottish cookbook. It was very short. And because uh, I, I actually learned English in Scotland, so I know. So when I um, went there, I was surprised by how stark everything is. And I was thinking, well, if you didn't have a lot of money and time and, you know, uh, and food and so forth, would you try things that just don't work? Of course not. You would try things that work. So here's a tradition that says, what are the most you know, important values in life? So compassion, um, this notion of wisdom, this notion of generosity. We say, actually, how do you get more yourself? You give more. Um, what is the leader's main qualities? They need to be strong and sustained. And we say, non-aggressive, which means having patience. If you're a leader that does not have patience, you will not survive the long haul. Everyone has a responsibility. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. It doesn't matter what your political system is or how obstructed you feel or your civil society institutions uh, seem to be. You can still have an impact on a process that ultimately can move forward. But you can never, ever give up and stop trying because uh, that is the only thing that has ever changed the world is people who have tried and, and some of the most dramatic and positive changes have taken place by those trying under the most seemingly impossible circumstances. Yeah. Yeah.